And now to baseball, after conducting a season-long investigation, MLB is now enforcing and really strictly enforcing penalties on players who use uh, sticky substances, illicit foreign substances on baseball's pitchers that allow them to get a grip. Uh, This is a thing that uh, the MLB can at least anecdotally measure now with spin rate and their ability to kind of like zoom in with high def cameras and really look at the way the ball is spinning. Uh, Enforcement went into effect June 21st. This opens up a lot of discussions about how MLB policies and its players, but also how they market the sport at this particular time as their fan base, you know, continues to be a pretty homogeneous older white uh, conservative in the sense of conservative about uh, progress with regards to its sport. So, man, this I think this is a really interesting situation because cheating, if you want to call it that, and sticky substances have been part of baseball for as long as baseball has been around for 140 years. And here they are changing it all of a sudden. Uh it is having effects on, on pitchers, pitchers being asked about it. Um, we had a pitcher uh, who blamed his recent injury on the fact that this just went into, uh, went into effect. Um, is, is MLB handling this the right way? And is this what they had to do right now? You know, MLB has been caught in a lot of sticky situations. No pun intended. (laughs) MLB is no stranger to people cheating People yes. breaking the rules, people using illegal substances. I think, you know, I like I've seen a lot of games in a sense of we cover a lot on TMZ and with MLB, the lingering effects of the cheating of the previous season are still in this season. So I think the MLB knows that they got to do something like whether it's the people banging on trash cans, whether it's illegal. Oh, substances my gosh. You know, like the oh MLB has problems. And so I think this is them like basically acknowledging that okay, maybe we got some problems we have to fix and we're starting with the balls and, and we're starting with the substances. But I think that MLB has a, a bigger problem and that's that people cheat in MLB not every once in a while. It happens more frequently than maybe it should. So I think that it's like horse racing. It's time to clean it up. We saw that horse racing did something they never did before. I think that just with this is the cleanup time of America. I feel like 2020 right, put a lot right. of things. That's a great point. Focus, and everyone looks like leagues wise, businesses, corporations, brands. It looks like everybody's starting to just clean up their house a little bit. I, that's a good point because, I mean, this is something we were talking about off mic, but sports in general, the three major sports, football, MLB, NBA, yeah, basketball. Um, have been in this weird, COVID aside, in this weird, like, crisis era, right? With the NFL, it's concussions and uh, their players uh, engaging sometimes in in criminal and or problematic activities and the response of of their teams to those players. And, of course, diversity at the highest levels of the league. And then you have LMB, the aging, uh, aging fan base. Games can take five and a half, six hours sometimes. Uh, is there a way to speed it up? What do we do? How do we match our game to the changing tastes of a, of a, of a, a younger demographic? Um, and then NBA, we have uh, TV ratings are going down. How do we change that? What do we do as we transition into an era in which we can envision LeBron moving from the stage? Uh, are big markets too dominant? Like all of these conversations have uh, have engendered a kind of atmosphere of of constant crisis. And I think this is this the sticky balls is just another one uh, for MLB. They they you put out a statement. Say the sticky balls. I did. I I had to. Jason. There was no way I could. There was no way I could avoid saying it. And I was hoping you would just let it go. <laughs> Gosh, of course not. <laughs> so LB came out with a statement said uh, essentially why they're uh, cracking down. Quote, it has become clear that the use of foreign substances has generally morphed from trying to get a better grip into something else, an unfair competitive advantage that is creating a lack of action and uneven playing field. And I think one of the things that players, coaches, and a lot of fans are asking for is just kind of like a, a MLB um, product that they say is okay. So batters use pine tar right? And that's, that's allowed within the rules. 
pitchers really don't have anything for a long time. They've been using um, rosin, which everybody's allowed to have like a rosin bag, but that combined with either sunscreen or some other substance that can like really give them a grip. But lately they've been using this stuff called spider tech, uh, which if what? it's, it's great, it's like, it's basically glue. And that has allowed players to, you know, have super sharp edges on their control, get spin rates that are just kind of like superhuman. And and it's one of those, this is why we can't have good, th nice things situations. <laughs> um, but I think what, you know, what the MLB just needs to do is be like, okay, you can use this. Here's the thing you can use and that's it. And everything else, if we catch you using it, then it's a problem, but you can use this right now. Um, and I think the other thing is, you know, with, with MLB is like, there's a real addiction to, to uh, velocity. Like yeah. that is the pop in the, in, in when, yeah. even in the marketing of, of baseball is, oh my God, this guy is throwing 98, 101, yep. 104, 105. Like that is what it's about. That's the, that's the eye popping stat that uh, baseball and teams and pitchers and players use to like market the sport right now is, oh my God, look how fast these guys are pitching. And in order to square that with not like killing somebody who's standing at the at, at bat, a lot of these pitchers feel like they got to use something. And I think that that'll be an interesting thing is how do you, how do you square this addiction to velocity with actual control that is possible to have without covering your hand in like glue it's <laughs> like dipping your hand in a vat of glue this is like crazy to me i have a question though because you you named yeah. all of those things going on baseball's trying to fix it up but one of the questions that we talked about is is controversy actually good for a for growing oh, the yeah. sport so it like what do you think like is is changing the rules is saying out loud that we're changing the rules so now fans might be coming to it saying oh okay they're trying to make things better over there mm. does that actually help I, I think I think it helps in this way I think the kind of controversy that highlights the player and allows players to express themselves or that is about players either expressing themselves through the way they play the game or the way they their flair for the game. I think that is generally good. Bat flips, guys staring at home runs. Oh, in the yeah. NFL, it would be celebrations in the end zone. Yeah. That kind of that kind of controversy, I think, is good because it highlights kind of what's fun about the sport, even though it is like sort of illicit. I'm not sure that guys cheating is necessarily a thing that would help grow the sport and like you know obviously well, not necessarily are, cheating but just the change of rules like if you're think, coming out and saying we're going to actually change rules we're going to actually if they do in the sit the further situation we're going to shorten the game we know that the controversy is that the games are too long we're shorting the game like is that now just taking the controversy like is it isn't that helping the sport in a sense the controversy is now turned into pr or like because let I, me give you an example the WNBA sure we rebranded maybe a couple years ago. I don't know how many, but we rebranded. And basically the rebrand was, all right, we're going to let WNBA players be their authentic That's selves. That's a great, yes. So if you're tatted up, we if you're if you're a sneakerhead, if you got dreads down your back, you know, if you're yeah. a tomboy or or if you aren't feminine, we don't care. We're going to yeah. embrace that. We Brittany Griner, we are steering into your vibe. We're steering into your energy. We're putting you yeah, front and center. We're tapping into that. We're leaning into that. So what that's contra and what's the worst part about it is leaning into that is almost controversial because yeah. as we know, the trolls and one of the big knocks was none of the women look like women or oh getting the kid, you know, all those things that were you could call controversy surrounding a certain type of fan base, of course. Yeah. The WNBA has actually leaned into those things and now it's become our selling point. The women have a voice. The women speak for themselves. The women stand up for things that are uh, causes that are close to them. The women are sneakerheads. They are more athletic than you sitting on the couch. You know, like yes. that all <laughs> That all has been embraced now. So the whole controversy and honestly, the way the WNBA used to brand us before, you know, we had, I will never forget one of our 
like promo songs was this one's for the girls and i was like yeah, yeah right. <laughs> this, this does not get me hyped for a game man and yeah. like we can all go back and look at the photos that were of former WNBA <laughs> players there you can tell that that wasn't the player swag but the WNBA yeah. wanted it to be that player yeah. swag and so th they've gotten rid of that and become our most authentic selves and i think that the WNBA has taken off for it those storylines you know those celebrations to your point you know, being able to see the personality of the player, I think is the biggest sell point. But for a long time, leaks have tried to almost move against that. They made, they wanted almost robots, we call it, and, and toy soldiers. Yeah, I think this is a particular problem in the MLB where, uh, you know, a pitcher standing on a mound has legitimately the potential of seriously injuring someone who stands, who's at bat. And I think part of the reason that baseball is, has been so hesitant or has been so aggressively against players like, you know, Fernando Tatis Jr. and others like expressing themselves, staring at their home runs, flipping their bats, et cetera, is because, man, if a pitcher gets mad, they could kill somebody. That said, I, I think to your, to your previous point about the NBA, the kind of controversy that could help grow baseball is the kind that highlights how cool, how fun, yeah. how charismatic, how personable their players are. And I think that ties back to the sticky stuff in the sense that less sticky stuff means more scoring, means more home runs, means more runs, means more uh, yeah. uh, players moving around the bases, means more chances for offensive players to express themselves in that way, which I think is cool like defense is great i have two questions because this is this yeah. is interesting to me i don't really know baseball so i want to ask you these two how will umpires know if it's sticky or if it's not sticky like i don't watch enough to to know and then do people really care that pitchers are using sticky substances i mean maybe that's a dumb question i don't know but like i, I know what you're saying now that might be less home runs but like is i think too half of the highlights that the MLB posts are when those balls are doing a crazy break or go like half of the way that they advertise huh. is, is about that kind of stuff. So I'm trying you to figure out where do they want to live? They can tell, I mean, with the, with the, with the cameras that they have now, they can, they can really tell like I, they can count the revolution. In on real the ball. time. You're talking about in yeah. real time. They can they can tell and they'll have people, you know, if you're an opposing team, you'll be in the dugout and be like, this guy's using it. They'll complain to the ump and the ump will go up. OK, um, so I think that there is there is it, it's pretty easy. And then you just go up and you're like, you know, can I touch your hand? You know, like, let me see. the bill OK, of your let me see your glove. Let me see the stuff now. Like there is uh, Zuri, uh, one of our producers said maybe they can have pictures have to like the ump will hold the glove until the pitcher goes to the mound and the ump gives him the glove at the same time man you know some of these guys have been hiding stuff everywhere al lighter who is a pitcher for uh, almost 20 seasons like he hid stuff everywhere like on his pocket on his pants like on the bill see, that's what again. i'm saying in real time, are the umpires going to be able to police the sticky objects to call the game to, and now they can throw out players at their discretion. So like, how far is MLB really going to take this? Because this could get interesting in a hurry if a ref throws out a player that he suspects is using sticky substances and then maybe he isn't. It's mm. just sunscreen that was on his arm for the game to your point that you talked about earlier. So what, like, how far can they, I don't, I just, how much can you police I, this? I don't know, but. I think it, I think it will depend on, I think it will depend on if players complain and if they're continue to complain. And if there is a rash of injuries amongst, amongst pitchers, because, uh, you just have to grip the ball a lot harder if you don't have stuff on your hand uh, to get the control that you need. And that increased muscle tension leads to increased ligament tension, leads to a different throwing motion, leads to you not having as many throws in your arm, leads to guys inevitably breaking down. I think if we see that, maybe they take their foot off the gas, but it really had progressed to a level where, I mean, there was like, there were more no hitters in the in the early part of this season than like ever before. More strikeouts, 
it was it had come to a point where MLB was like, okay, like we need to do something because the pitchers have too much control. We'll see what happens. 